the cattle that's been lost, the pastures. Wildfires continue scorching thousands of acres across the state of Idaho tonight. We just learned at least one of those fires has destroyed multiple structures, while others are prompting emergency declarations and evacuation notices. The state fire marshal's office says the paddock fire, threatening small communities in Jem, Washington, and Payette counties, destroyed several outbuildings today. And in Ola, officials say a volunteer firefighter's house burned down. He was napping after a hard fight on the fire line. Fortunately, fellow firefighters woke him up and helped him escape. Our Abby Davis is at the Fire Command Center in Emmett. Abby, the center was just set up today. Morgan, a type three incident management team moved in a little bit earlier. They are now taking over all of the logistics for this fire, hoping to relieve some of the pressure off of the local agencies, the local BLM. We know that ranchers are being allowed to round up and move their livestock, but that many of the roads surrounding the fire are closed at this time as those flames continue raging. So I'm going to turn this around. Jessica Yarno is gearing up for another long night protecting her family's livelihood. Yeah, it, it it jumped so many lines that they had out there, and I'm not sure if you're even going to be able to see it. She says it was a nightmare as firefighters stopped the paddock fire from burning their homestead down Wednesday. She's hoping that's also the case Thursday. Winds started kicking back towards us, so this is just north of us. The winds start kicking back towards us just like they did yesterday. The exact same scenario. Horses are really stretched so, so, so thin right now. So... We're just going to pray. The fire, about 20 miles north of Emmett, has scorched more than 150,000 acres in Jem, Washington, and Payette counties. It's not contained at all. When you have family and loved ones and you see uh, land going up and timber being destroyed and everything, I mean, you know, that's, it, you know, it's quite devastating to see all that to go up in flames. I appreciate you. You too. Lauren Price didn't let the smoke stop him from dropping off supplies for firefighters at the Sweet Firehouse Thursday. They asked us to stay in, but I felt that I needed to come up here to deliver some things. We have a lot of people out here um, on the fire that need support. Brandi Barker set up the community drop-off station after thinking of ways to help her friend's husband who was battling the flames. I just wanted to do something. I wanted to help, and I just thought taking a care package up to the fire station so it was there when he got back. I didn't know who was on the fire. I didn't know how big it was. I just wanted to drop something off and just as my way of thanking him. She doesn't have a specific list of items they want people to bring yet, mainly just drinks and snacks. The atmosphere is calm with, um, with some of the locals and some of the firefighters but the need is desperate. I mean, if you're a firefighter and everything, and if you can get a reprieve of uh, whatever, a few minutes to take in liquids or whatever, I mean, that probably means a lot right there. We love our little community and we want to do whatever we can for them. There are lots and lots of questions about this fire and frankly, not a lot of information coming out, but the type three incident management team does plan on hosting a community meeting here at the Gem County Fairgrounds. That is on Saturday at 5 p.m. And for people who can't make it here in person, Morgan, there is also a Zoom link. Abby, those ranchers and all the folks who live out there so, so resilient. I'm hearing from friends who have helped move other yeah. neighbors livestock who are staying behind to help fight that fire on mm -hmm. their property. Abby Davis, thank you so much.